Hillary identifies something that she calls linguistic theft. And so this is when words are sort of co-opted, the definitions are changed, and then they're used again uh, to mean something different than the listener understands them to mean. You mean like when you say something 51 times and you say it meant something different the first 49 times you said it than it did the last two? <laughs> Now, I don't want to pick on Elisa Childers here because she's expressing a very commonly held Christian belief that all scriptures are breathed out by God, and she's citing a very common Christian source to back up this claim, 2 Timothy 3.16. And of course, we all know 2 Timothy 3.16-17, through 17, which says all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete equipped for every good work. Now, the first problem with her claim is so easy to find that Frank Turek actually tripped over it, and he agrees with her. In fact, think about this, ladies and gentlemen. Do you know that we have more access to God's revelation than the Apostle Paul had? Paul probably died before he saw some of the New Testament. He probably didn't see the book of Revelation. He probably didn't see the book of Hebrews unless he wrote it. Um, he probably didn't see certain books in the New Testament written later. We have more information about God than the Apostle Paul. However, the second problem is going to require a little bit of investigation into the text. Now, just to brush back over Frank Turek's point, um, yeah, it, it, well, it wasn't really his point. It was just a casual observation. If, if we look here, this is the ESV timeline on the New Testament books, and it is very conservative. I think these books were written probably at least a decade after they put most of them. But if we look here, between 64 and 67, Peter and Paul are martyred in Rome. Now, even this is a little deceptive because if we come back up here, we see that the letter to Hebrews is written between 60 and 70. So that could be after Peter and Paul, but just using the ones that they put after Peter and Paul. Um, we come down here. There's a, there's a lot of other history mixed in. John writes his letters between 85 and 95, well after, between 89 and 95, John writes his gospel. So we see here that, you know, some of these books were clearly written, and John writing Revelation between 95 and 96, some of them are clearly written after Paul died. It's kind of hard for him to authenticate books that are written after his death. Even more problematic, just kind of as a side note, the canon doesn't come about till at least 150 years after his death. And so he doesn't even know what's going to be put in the New Testament. Yet somehow he's saying that the New Testament scriptures are breathed out by God. And I'm going to show you that's what the claim is. <laughs> Literally that the canon itself, um, if we look here, here's the word scripture, every scripture. I know no Greek whatsoever. I'm not going to pretend that I do. Um, but we have the ability to look it up in the concordance writing passage for scriptures. If we look at helps word studies, it says the inspired inerrant writings of the Bible, the 66 books of scripture, 39 in Hebrew, 27 in Greek. Now it says it's used 51 times in the new Testament, always of Holy scripture. But if we come down here, the new Testament generally utilizes this word for the Hebrew scriptures. But see also 2 Timothy 3.16, the verse we're looking at, and 2 Peter 3.16, which we won't be getting into. So they're saying in these two occasions, unlike the other 49, they actually meant to include the 27. So, so Paul was including the 27 Greek writings, not knowing what 27 would come into the canon, and some of them were written after his death, yet somehow he's authenticating them in 2 Timothy. I'm not quite sure how, but that's the argument that's being made. Now, the other thing is we're going to go back and look at a couple verses, but I want, I want to show something first. The word childhood translated often child. One, one version translates it infant, um, which is the correct translation. 
this word, if you look here, infant, babe, child in arms. Okay. So when we come to second Timothy, now this is interesting. We're, Google second Timothy three ESV. We go to ESV.org, click on it. She was saying that all Christians know this verse and she's right. When you, yeah, I just Googled second Timothy three ESV and they take you straight to 16, forget the rest of it because you, they don't literally don't want you to read 14 and 15. Why 14? But as, as for you continue in what you have learned and firmly believed knowing from whom you learned it, that would be his mother and grandmother, and how from childhood, infancy, baby, that's the word, baby in arms, right? So from infancy, you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So what Paul is saying here is that some of the sacred writings, this would of course be the Old Testament, they don't dispute that, okay? They, this one they're saying is the Old Testament. That some of the sacred writings are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus, but all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So what he's saying is that some of the Old Testament will, not all of it, certainly, but some of it will teach you, prepare you to understand that Jesus, in his opinion, is the Messiah. And that's what he's saying. But all scripture, all of the Old Testament scriptures are breathed out by God and are profitable for the following things. So it's a sum versus all to to take the sum as being part of the Old Testament. But the all includes the New Testament. I mean, it's just not consistent with what he says here. Now, to be clear, this doesn't mean that the New Testament isn't the word of God. It's simply, I'm simply saying that there's no way that Paul was making this claim. Assuming Paul wrote second Timothy, I don't happen to believe he did, but assuming that he did, <laughs> this wasn't what he was claiming. <clears throat> he would be ha having to take responsibility for a canon that comes 150 years after his death, taking responsibility for at least four or five books that aren't written until after his death and claiming them to be breathed out by God when he would have no idea what the, what these books are or what they're going to say. It, it just doesn't stand to reason that this is what Paul is saying here. So just to be clear here, this is not a debate over whether or not the new Testament is breathed out by God. That's not my point here. It's simply to say that in second Timothy three sixteen, Paul is not saying that the New Testament is breathed out by God. If you personally believe that it is, you're entitled to that belief. I disagree, but you're entitled to that belief. But you're not entitled to make Paul say it just because you believe it. I'm Steve Perry from biblicalanarchy.com. If you like this video, don't just sit there. Click the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, or share it on your Facebook or other social media accounts. Thank you for watching.